right, so we will go ahead um, and get started. Hello, my name is Emily Radke. I'm one of the assistant directors of admissions here at Simpson College. I am joined by fellow assistant director of admissions, Jeremy Johnson. Um, and we are here um, to kind of monitor um, our presentation tonight about Simpson College's clubs, organizations, and groups. Uh, here at Simpson, we actually have over 75 clubs and organizations here on campus. Um, it's something that we're really proud of as we really love for our students to really organize um, and also um, get in touch with other students um, on things that they all have in common, um, as well as giving students the autonomy to start new groups. So we have some fine students on the line here um, or on the line on the Zoom call that are going to be talking to you about some of the clubs and organizations that they are involved in, um, and also some things on how you can also be involved in some of those things, as well as their fearless leader and mentor, Rich Ramos, who um, is um, our El Capitan, as you would say, of our clubs and organizations here at Simpson. Good evening, everyone. My name is Rich Ramos, as Emily said, and I uh, am the Associate Dean of Students, and I work with student activities, clubs and organizations, uh, everything that's kind of uh, would be on the student involvement side on campus. Um, like Emily said, we have a number of different clubs and organizations on campus, and we one of the things I think that we strive to is to have a lot of clubs and organizations that kind of hit just about everything. Obviously, during political years, we have a lot of political clubs and organizations on all over the spectrum, but we have a, a number of Greek letter organizations, we have a number of academic organizations, and we have a number of other ways that students can get involved, whether it's student activities, religious life, uh, the campus activities board, student government, there's any number of different ways that students can get involved and connected on campus. And, and that's kind of what we do. One of the things that Emily also mentioned is that um, if it, it's pretty easy for a student to start a club or organization here on campus too. We, we know that we don't have probably the club or organization that's gonna pique every single student's interest here on campus, but we, we wanna make it so that if we don't have it, uh, that you or any other student on campus can, can figure out a way to create it. Um, just in the last couple of months, we've had a couple of new organizations that have started and are looking to grow and connect on campus, whether it's a fencing club that has just started or we have a power lifting club that is just starting. Um, and I just talked with another student today about starting a club that is around the board game risk. So um, we, we really strive ourselves on doing that. Um, I'm not sure how many of you are going to be here with, with us in the fall or looking a year or two down the road, um, but in the fall each year, for those of you who are coming in the fall, each year we have what's called Org Fest during at least a normal time where you get the opportunity to talk and interact with any number of students from any of most of our clubs and organizations here on campus. It's a great time to find out what club is for you, what club uh is not here that you'd like to see get started whether it's intramural if you'd like to play intramural sports you can get involved in those sorts of ways but our org fest usually happens in the first couple of days when students are on campus in the fall and i would encourage any student to make sure that they go to that whether you're a transfer student whether you're a new student or whatever it's just it's just a great opportunity to hopefully find an organization that's for, right for you um, the other piece i'd say about that involvement is that it's it's a um this is an opportunity for maybe step out of your comfort zone and try something a little bit different that you may not have found yourself really uh, into. We have students who never would have thought that they would be the student government type who are involved in student government. We have students that uh, who join a Greek letter, letter organization who never would have thought themselves to be a part of a Greek letter organization or students who play intramurals who never would have uh, considered participating in, in anything sport like. So I would encourage you to definitely get involved and come to OrgFest and, and find out everything that's here for us, for you to get involved and engaged on campus. And if we don't have it, let's figure out how we can create it and, and make it happen for you. With that in mind, I'm going to have the students that are on this call introduce themselves um, and talk about a little bit about their involvement experience, um, what they do, why they got involved, all those sorts of things. 
And I'll just go in kind of order of who's on my screen. Let's start with Courtney. Okay, um, my name is Courtney Reyna, and I am currently a junior here at Simpson. Um, I am majoring in elementary education, and I have been pretty active on campus. I'm currently the president of CAB, which is our campus activities club on campus. Um, I am the treasurer of our Rotary Club, our Rotaract Club. Um, I'm also a part of a academic club for education club, um, best buddies, and I'm also a Wesley service scholar. So, um, and I've dabbled and go, gone to a lot of different events outside of the clubs that I'm active in. And yeah. Awesome. Let's go to Corey next. Uh, thank you, Rich. Hello, everyone. My name is Corey Torres. I am pretty involved here on campus. I'm from Houston, Texas, so I figured the way to make friends and meet new people would to throw myself into every single organization that I had time for. Um, one of my favorite organizations that I did not think I would be a part of is student government. Um, I am a junior class senator, so I am on a team where I represent um, the student body and then more specifically the junior class here at Simpson College. And yes, I would highly recommend getting involved specifically with organizations. Like for example, I'm in the beekeeping club. I know about bees and that's not something that like I could say a lot of colleges have. So I highly recommend um, just getting involved and trying new things. Also, Miss Emily might wanna pop in here in a second. She was intramural champion back when she was here at card games or like card night and I won card night last year. So me and Miss Emily need to go hand in hand in Uno because right now we are both champions. So many organizations and the more the merrier in my opinion. All right, let's go to Trent. Hi, my name is Trent Pelzer. Um, I think that Corey said it really well. I think that if you're on campus, it's a great idea to, you know, get involved. Uh, it's a great way to meet new people. I myself, I'm a freshman on campus. I run track and field. Um, I run cross country. I'm in the accounting club. And then I'm also a, a fellow member of FCA, which is a fellowship of Christian athletes. Um, I would say that my favorite club is definitely the accounting club only because it's a great opportunity to uh, work on your career career skills, uh, network with local CPAs in the Des Moines area and, you know, build better connections with the professors. So I think that's probably my favorite club and it'll, it'll help me a lot in the future. So that's a little bit about me. And certainly last but not least, let's go with Laura. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm Laura and I am a junior here. Um, I, yes, I think we all represent a good number of organizations. We definitely are all super involved, those of us who are on the call, but I come from a super small high school. So when you come from a small high school, it's kind of necessary that you get involved because we need people to be able to play sports and we need people to be able to put on band concerts and choir concerts and all that fun stuff. So I was used to being really busy in high school. And so when I came to college, it was just natural to keep doing keep doing all the things. So you can read my list on the PowerPoint, but I'm involved in honors program. So that's an academic honors program where we, so it's kind of academic and clubs, it's kind of a good mix of that. And then I'm one of those people who never would have pictured myself in a sorority, but I am a member of Tri Delta. And then I'm in Rotaract Club with Courtney. I'm the current president. So that's super community engagement, um, community service involved. Uh, so we kind of get off campus and on campus involvement there as well as with Wesley Service Scholar. And then I've also participated in music throughout my whole time here at Simpson and I've dabbled a little bit in theater as well. So, yeah. This, this, is, this next question is kind of for all of you, but um, why did you all choose to get involved when you got here, knowing that you were obviously here first for your academics, but why did you choose to get involved in other things outside of the academic classroom? And this can go to any of you. Yeah, Corey. Um, so originally when I came to Simpson, um, I was a swimmer. And after I decided to no longer like, and being on a, being on a sports team here, that's kind of your family. That's who you're going to group with, eat meals with, make friends with. And I decided I didn't want to swim anymore. And being an out-of-state kid, it's kind of hard to like make friends so I said, well, I need friends. So let me join all these organizations that have like a multitude of different people from different backgrounds um, 
to make friends. So yeah, I kind of, in a, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm still friends with the people that I swam with, but it wasn't that constant, like practice time, that set routine. So I knew that in order for me to kind of branch out and explore relationships with other people that I needed to get involved. So like my extracurricular and organizational activity did not happen until my sophomore year, but I'm glad it did because I still have my like athletic friend group, but then I made a whole bunch of great friends joining all these clubs my sophomore and junior year. I'd like to add to that. So if you are, if you think you have your own people and you are a part of a sport or um, you're going to hang out with all the people that you're majoring with, um, always branch out into other groups because um, I hang out with a bunch of different people that I'm not a part of their club, but we're best friends. And, um, if I just go, they might have an event and I'm like, I'll just go to your event. I'm not a part of your club or organization. And you meet so many people by just going to any and every random event that might be happening on campus. You see, Oh, there's something happening. Our black box, go walk in there, see what it's all about and meet some people. It's a great way to do it. And I wasn't, a, um, on a sport when I came here. I'm not in a sport still. And so I thought uh, joining a club, joining all the clubs was the best way to get involved and to make friends aside from your freshman year roommate. All right. Um, you, you all are clearly really involved in a lot of things. How do you all balance uh, your involvement, but still maintain good grades and, and get everything that you want out of the clubs, but also still getting everything you need out of your, your academic experience. So for me, that was a really hard thing to do um, to balance everything because I wanted to be involved in everything and to be a leader in absolutely every club that I was in. And it got to the point, you just got to prioritize what is most important to you, which one you um, love the most. That doesn't mean you can't be involved in the other um, clubs or events and things like that. You, you just might not be there as often. You might just be a general member and go when you can because you have other priorities and you have to figure that those are priorities. They come really easily. You can tell which ones that you care more about versus other ones and you'll figure that out pretty soon. And, and Corey obviously has a calendar which she clearly lives and dies by. Yes. I don't think I could function through college without a planner or a calendar. I have an hourly breakdown of my days so like my class schedule and then my clubs like for example I know for a fact every single Wednesday of the semester I have SGA and I have like an allotted two hours for student government but also for me in terms of like time management if I have too much free time I procrastinate so I don't I don't recommend this if you don't enjoy being stressed, but the more things I'm involved in, the more hours I'm taking, the more likely I'm going to stay on top of my stuff. So if I have like maybe 30 minutes of free time the entire day, I know I'm going to prioritize getting all my things done so I can watch the newest episode of The Bachelor before I go to bed rather than staying up all night and doing homework. So I get, yeah, I don't recommend overwhelming yourself, but if you perform better under pressure, like I do, I just, I stack everything on and then I prioritize and I, I'm organized, I'm organized in my planner and yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> Trent, how do you manage it with, with sports involvement and, and being involved as well as academics? Cause that's a whole different beast in itself. Yeah. So cross country and track, we run, we run pretty much year round. So I guess it's kind of difficult, but I think that this may sound weird, but in college, I feel like you do have a little bit more free time. Then in high school, because if you think about it, in high school, you were in you were in school for like eight hours a day. And then I, I played four sports in high school. So I played baseball, basketball, track, cross country. I got I went to practice, came home and then I ate. And by that time, it was already late. So I think in college, you do have a little bit more free time. And so I think I just like to re reiterate the point that you're going to have more free time. So why not use that time to, you know, go make go make friends, go join different clubs and all that. But. Um, I'm kind of used to time management skills, so I've had too much of a problem this freshman year, but yeah, just prioritize your time and definitely have a planner. I, that, that's what I do. Every week I set my schedule up and make sure that I'm getting things done. So, yep. Awesome. And Laura, how about you with 
um, your sorority involvement. And then also, I know that sometimes choir can also take a fair amount of time. And, and I know a lot of students who, who may be music majors may look at, at what's required to be a music major, but, um, or, or just want to be in a choir and may worry about the time commitment between that and their sorority and academics. How do you make it work? Yeah, it's definitely hard. But one thing that I thought of while, um, while we've been talking about this is that the people who I'm in clubs with in my sorority and in choir and all of that have become my friends. So it's not like I'm trying to balance my academics and my clubs and my social life because my social life and my clubs are one and the same. So like when I go to these activities, I'm hanging out with my friends. So then the extra, so it just kind of feels like free time. And I think, so that's why it's important to, to be able to find something that, that catches your attention and, and that you're passionate about, or if we don't have it, then you can start your own. Um, that's important to you. Um, yeah, and like Courtney said, you'll kind of find out what that is right away. Like my freshman year, I think I got involved in too many things and I ended up having to, to cause I was in band and choir. And I was like, well, I need to prioritize because that, that's a lot, like there's a lot going on and I want to be in, involved in more than just the music department. Um, so I, so I didn't play band anymore, but I still got to be in choir. So just kind of prioritizing, like what's the most important to you is important as well. Awesome. And I know that Corey mentioned a, a minute ago about how, as weird as it sounds, the busier you are, the better, uh, she does academically. Um, you know, all the data that we have shows that more students, the more students are engaged, the more academically successful they are. And um, sometimes it's hard for parents to grasp that because I think sometimes parents want you to sit in your room and spend all your free time studying. Um, but we also know that the more you're involved, the more you're going to get connected to our community um, and academically, the more successful you're going to be. So um, that's yet another reason to get involved and get connected on campus. I know we have a limited amount of time and there were some other questions that came in that sort of relate to this, but sort of don't relate to this. And I wanna hit a couple of those questions. Um, one of the questions I know that came in was, are there study groups? And if so, how do you join one? And this for anybody who wants to take it. I personally think that any, okay, most experience that I've had with the study group has been class-based. So it's either been organized by someone in the class or organized by the professor. Um, and they're like, here, come, we're going to have a study session tonight. And so it's kind of something that happens um, class by class. But I know that there are, um, like the honors program, we do study nights sometimes. And I'm guessing maybe some of the different, uh, like, educational club, uh, like, educational related clubs will do study nights at the in that way as well. Okay. Corey? Yes. So I'm currently taking my senior seminar research class for my political science major. And we're all in this really big group chat and we like help each other out. And I don't, I, I don't want to speak for other majors, but the poli sci or the political science major is kind of like a healthy cult. We all take the same classes every single semester and we know every single person who's in the major. And so I know for a fact that like, if I'm taking this new poli sci class that I haven't taken before, but a senior is taking it or they took it last year, I could text them and they would like provide me with like textbooks that they bought and that kind of thing. Um, so I guess for the poli sci major, we study or get on like group face, I guess group zoomed calls now, or just big Snapchat groups and give each other like tips and hints and helpful, like, tricks to perform well um specifically like we all know how certain professors like certain essays specifically in terms of formatting or the way like the exams are going to be laid out and so for the incoming first years in the major we like take them under our wings and be like hey this is this if you're taking this class with this professor expect this kind of thing and if you need help I would say all the juniors and seniors in my major specifically are more than willing to help like you get better study habits because it, it's different for, for every major. The studying that you need isn't the same for all of the other classes that you're going to take in reference to like gen ed or just other majors in general. Courtney, were you going to say something? I was just going to say that Trent should take it over because he's a part of a team on campus and I know that they have to do like study tables or something like that certain amount or 
certain amount of hours like a week or something yeah so at the beginning of the year uh for cross country um we had to do like so many hours per week in the library and then our coach would just check us off but there wasn't much of a problem on the cross country team with kids doing their homework and um getting things done so coach monk actually stopped that because everyone's grades on the team were successful but i know for some different sports coaches require students to go in there and get so many hours per week it's not a lot but they just want to hold you accountable and that's pretty much about it really okay An another question here well in the next couple of minutes is how is the food in the cafeteria Corey, yes, you okay. can go. You okay, looked really excited about I that. I just had supper this evening in the hall, in the dining hall. So I, I, I'm not going to lie. The food used to be really bad, but it is so good now. So good. I eat in Pfeiffer, our dining hall, quite religiously, specifically for supper, um, mostly because none of my classes are early enough that require me to eat breakfast. But today I had this, like, Asian spicy ginger pork over rice and then beautifully sauteed. Um, what was it? Chicken with jasmine rice and green beans. And they have a salad bar. And then if you don't want salad, they have a yogurt bar with granola and a whole bunch of different fruits you can put on it. And then I had a, a Greek salad pizza. And I know that sounds kind of funky, but let me tell you, it was divine it was like a cheese pizza with black olives and spinach and feta the dining hall is phenomenal it used to be like meh, meh, but it's so good it's so good I eat there every single evening highly recommend everyone go eat in Pfeiffer dining hall Any, anybody else want to top that I, I mean I, I I don't know that I could top that all I know is Millie's, our Starbucks and coffee place, is my life every day, all day. And it comes, it's it's very useful, especially since it's open, open on the weekends compared to, and the hours are much better than some of the other dining options. So I love it. Well, I know we just have about six minutes left. I I want to thank the the four of you for uh, leading this conversation and and hopefully you all that are, are watching this and participating in this um, realize why I enjoy working with our clubs and organizations. We have a great group of students um, and, you know, look forward to seeing you all on campus and someday taking the places around this table uh, of these folks uh, leading our campus organizations and and being involved. It's 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 a great experience and and I encourage anybody to do it and, and look forward to seeing you all here very soon. So with that, I'll turn it over to Emily, I think, or Jeremy, either or. Yep. Yep. No problem. Yeah. Thanks everyone for being on. Um, I just ask that you guys do stay on just in case our students have just a few more questions. Um, now we're going to go ahead and just talk um, just a little bit about Simpson and just some of the things that we are um, very proud of here um, being, you know, that we are, I, I like to say basically the premier institution about 15 minutes south of the Des Moines area. So um, one of the first things that we are really proud of um, here at Simpson um, is the fact that we are a smaller campus. So it is a four year private liberal arts education um, that you will be getting here at Simpson. We have about 1200 total students on campus and they are all full time and undergraduate students. We also um, do have, um, you know, with that about a faculty size of about 300, which means with having 300 faculty members, 1,200 total students on campus, you're going to see small class sizes. So uh, we do have about a 12 to 1 student to faculty ratio. I would say that your biggest class all depending um, may be anywhere from 20 to 25 people, maybe a lab for bio 101 or chem 101 at about 40. Um, but the great thing about those is that, you know, those labs are relatively small. But one thing that our faculty really prides themselves on is the fact that, you know, you're not going to be a number. When you go to class, it's going to be something to where, you know, your professors are going to know your name and you're not going to be calling them professor so-and-so. You're going to be calling them by first name. They're going to let you know everything um, that you're going to need to know for the semester. Um, and they also really do pride themselves on what I like to call discussion based learning. So making sure that you're, they're not just talking to you for 45 minutes, but you're having an actual discussion about what you're being taught um, and 
different strategies and ways that you can actually use those things in the world world, which is very important in the college experience. And I especially think during these times that we're living in now. Another great thing about Simpson is we do have over 80 different majors, minors, and pre-professional programs. So, you know, I don't know if you saw, but all of these great students that we have on the call here tonight are, are majoring in various different areas. Those majors, whether it be political science, accounting, nursing, history, education, um, you know, they're, they can all be tied to some really awesome intern opportunities for you, whether they are right here in Indianola, which is um, a fast growing suburb of Des Moines, or actually the greater Des Moines area, which is actually one of the fastest growing metropolitan areas in the country. So um, a lot of really great opportunities there um, with, you know, taking what you learn in the classroom and implementing it into those intern opportunities as soon as your freshman year. Uh, the next thing that we are really proud of here about Simpson is our graduation rate. So national average for graduation rates for um, undergraduates within four years is around 85%. And that's kind of been hanging there a little bit for probably the past five to seven years. Here at Simpson, we have a continuing trend of 99%. 99% of our students do graduate on time. And after they um, graduate within six months, they are either in the workforce, um, in graduate school, or actually they may go to the military. Um, so, you know, we really wanna make sure and we pride ourselves on the fact that we make sure that our students with the classes they're taking with the intern and job experience that they're gaining during their four years at Simpson, that they can leverage that into not only a career that they're going to enjoy, but a profitable one too, because no one has time to not make money, right? So what's the next thing we're going to talk about here? You guys see that there's an acute little bracket here um, talking a little bit about some of the scholarship um, opportunities that we do have here at Simpson. You'll also know here that there is a comprehensive fee and it is steep. Um, you know, the comprehensive fee, um, for example, right now for students is around 53,000. Um, that's for the first, um, for your first year, if you're coming in fall 21. Um, for fall 2021, um, but all of our students will receive a, uh, um, an academic scholarship based on your cumulative high school GPA. So as you can see here, the higher your GPA, the more money you get. But that's not where we stop. You know, we do have various different merit and special interest scholarships that are open to any and all student, um, students that are wanting to apply. Those merit scholarships, you know, you do have to have a certain GPA and ACT score in order to um, be competitive for those. But again, one of the primary things that myself and even Jeremy can attest to is that, you know, we aren't just your admissions counselor, we're your advocate as well. Or that person that if you have questions about a scholarship, you have questions about the FAFSA, if you, you know, need someone even to just read a cover letter for an outside scholarship, we could be that person for you because we want the best for you. And most importantly, we really want you to come to Simpson and have a fantastic time and learn, grow and develop into the person that you want to be. So um, for those of you that may be juniors on the call, how do I apply? What are some of the next steps that I need to kind of, you know, get to that Simpson experience? Well, first things first, I love the fact that we are, um, you know, utilizing virtual visits and forums like this where students can, you know, learn more about Simpson and hear from students from the comfort of their own home. But I tell you right now, one of the best ways to get to know Simpson is to visit Simpson. We have been open and keeping students safe and their families um, since mid-July. Um, and we are still following very, very strict um, COVID protocols that you can find all on our website. Um, but with our visits, we actually, we have about, I'd probably say six to nine visits open every day, and they're all personalized. You can fill out um, our visit, um, our visit form excuse me, online, and tell us what you want to do when you come to campus. Do you want to take a tour? Do you want to see the dorms? Do you want to speak to an accounting professor? Um, you know, do you want to speak to the quarterback on the football team? Doesn't matter. We will do what we can to make it work. So that way you're really getting a full sense of what Simpson could get, could do for you um, if this is where you want to be for the next four years. Um, for seniors that are on the call, our application is ready and available right now. For junior Years, our application for students coming in fall 2022 will be ready in July um, this upcoming summer. So the only things that, that you really need for our application, first and foremost, we do not have an application fee. We just need um, your high, official high school transcript, that completed application, 
AC and ACT scores, um, you'll want to talk with your counselor about how to um, apply test optional. And then also, if you are looking to apply to multiple schools, Simpson is a part of the common app. So it's kind of that thing where you only have to fill out one application and you can send it out to as many schools um, as you want. Um, we are also still accepting the FAFSA. So we want to make sure that we're getting that FAFSA in. We have a fantastic um, financial aid department um, and we want to make sure that you are getting some type of financial aid as 100 100% of our students do get financial aid that come to Simpson. And last but not least, if you're a senior and you have applied and you've been admitted and you've gotten scholarships and all those great things, the next step for you is to pay a deposit. So we want to make sure that you're paying that $200 deposit to reserve your spot in the class of 2025 uh, um, and um, making sure that you're getting signed up for SOAR, um, which is our registration time, um, as well as getting you on campus for Admitted Student Day. So with all of that being said, um, we've talked about a lot of different things today. We've talked about all of the great things about clubs and organizations. Um, myself and Jeremy, we're also Simpson grads and we were both heavily involved um, during our time at Simpson. Um, what questions do you guys have, um, whether about the application process um, or um, about visiting Simpson or even um, questions that you want to ask our, um, our student panel here? So. Um, if you want, you can either put your question in the chat or you can just unmute yourself and go ahead and ask. Emily, real quick, one question I get, and Rich, you'll be able to chime in here. And I believe, Courtney, you, you've been part of CAB, our Campus Activities Board. Um, one question I've been getting a lot from students is, obviously, during this past year, we've had a lot of challenges, you know, with COVID and that. And Campus Activities Board has, has had to be a lot more creative on bringing different events to campus. Can you talk a little bit about what we've done, kind of some of the creative things we've done for students when we haven't been able to, you know, bring large groups together? Go ahead, Courtney. Okay, um, I was just going to say the first thing is first when we went um, all virtual this past spring, we definitely continued activities and games um, with our campus activities club with online games. We had online trivia, we did online bingo and various things like that. And we continued that into the fall just because we were unsure on how to get everybody back um, in person. And we wanted to make sure that, that we provided opportunities for students who still weren't sure about being in person with other people. And we wanted them to feel safe and give them opportunities to stay involved and have activities. Um, slowly but surely, we found different events that we know work that are proper social distancing. And we know that with our spacing of people and our limited contact with others and sharing things that we can make um, some of the events great. So, um, and then we've also been doing um, giveaways on Wednesdays where we give students activities to do so that we don't necessarily have to have an event where everybody meets together. They can take those activities to their dorm rooms or their apartments. Yep. And in the last, um, probably the last couple weeks, we've started to do move into live entertainment on campus um, with, with, as Courtney mentioned, some pretty significant restrictions and, and the number of people is, is really limited. We have a physical plexiglass barrier between all of our performers and the audience. We sanitize all the tables before people get in and after the event is over so that uh, it's a clean space. All of our performers are expected to wear masks when they're uh, not on stage behind a plexiglass barrier. We put them in rooms that have a pretty significant airflow so that that's safe as well. Um, but we're, we're doing what we can to try and get back to normal. We're also streaming all of those because we know not every student is comfortable coming into a space yet. So uh, we respect that and um, we also stream all those shows that we're doing as well. So students have an opportunity to participate, even if they don't want to come in person. All right, great. Thank you.
All righty. Well, um, again, just want to um, thank all of you for joining us tonight. Um, you know, again, you know, our panel, these are fantastic students and it's really awesome to see these students here having that, having this opportunity to really showcase um, what it is that they have been doing. So I do thank you all. Um, if you have any questions or anything like that, you know, please feel free to reach out to either myself or Jeremy. You can find our profiles and our contact information on the Simpson website. Um, but other than that, you guys have a wonderful evening. Thank you again for joining and we will see you on our next virtual. Bye.